Hi, everybody. It's a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, a concept that I picked up in, in studying Xin Yi, and um, it's actually applicable to all the internal martial arts. And that is the uh, three stages of development of your Kung Fu and the three types of energies that one, one can practice when one, one is, uh, uh, you know, doing anything. And uh, like I say, it comes from the Xing Yi tradition. I've never really seen it anywhere else, but, uh, you know, talking with uh, uh, Yang Fu Kui, uh, you know, we were, were discussing it and he, you know, he says it's, it's applicable across the boards in terms of, of uh, you know, all the internal martial arts. And the idea is we have three types of jin or internal energies that um, are used to, uh, you like to think of them as like approaches to your practice. And the uh, it's Ming Jin, An Jin, and Hua Jin. And I may have discussed this with you briefly before, but uh, let's just start over again. That's uh, Ming Jin is obvious, the obvious practice. That is like when you do a form and there's a, there, you're demonstrating that form. That is, you're, you're showing it in a way that, so that everybody can see what it is you're doing. And a lot of what I do in these, uh, um, in, in, in these classes is to do it from that perspective. That is, I want you to see that, you know, what it is I'm doing so that, you know, it looks, it's big. It'll be bigger than, than ordinary. And particularly when we're doing like the Yang Cheng Fu 13 original postures, where it's very big, very, you know, it's very present. The... Uh, Anjin is hidden. So the obvious, and then the Anjin is hidden. And that is it, we are, you're not sure what's going on there. And the Huajin is transformational. And so one way of thinking of it is the Ming Jin is probably what most people I'd say probably at least 90% of people who practice internal martial arts, particularly Tai Chi Chuan, do. And that is, we do a form to convert the physicality or the Jing, the essence, the physical essence, into Qi. So people are, are doing a form in order to get more Qi and to basically to... They're controlling their physicality in order to convert it into chi. And then whenever we get to um, anjin, then it's we are converting the chi into shen or spirit. And so the spirit we're talking about here is 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 you know you can think of it as the the um, the yang aspect of, of spirit in your personal spirit and the yang aspect of that. And that is how, using spirit to make something happen, to, you know, to, to, to do something. So the spirit that we're talking about here is more in common with, say, uh, uh, like a spirited horse or team spirit or you know, the spirit of the boxer in the ring. So there is there is a, a desire to make something happen, to win, to to compete, that kind of thing. So it's a very uh very uh distinct definition of spirit and and it needs to be really seen in that light rather than you know a, a lot of other ways of looking at spirit because it's spirit is one of those words that you know it has you know a lot of different definitions depending on the context. So in this particular context, when when the Taiji Tran and when the Taoist uh, uh, 
energy workers think about spirit, they're thinking about that con that state of insubstantiality that is beyond energy, that's beyond mind. And so we get into the Shen, and it's a very directed kind of uh, kind of thing, which guides the the mind, guides the energy. And so the, the in in the Taoist and, and Taiji literature, they talk about forging the spirit, condensing and forging the spirit. So it's something it's considered to be a resource that each of us has. And some of us are more adept than others at compressing the spirit and directing it to make something happen. And um, so going from, so in the Anjin, we are going from, from the body to energy, from there to energy to spirit or Shen. And we're using that. So we're taking the Qi and using that to bringing our focus in so that we are condensing and forging our spirit. So that's, that's that. And that is a, it's actually a very yin process. We're attracting chi from, from the environment we're gathering, whereas the, the Ming Jin is, is, is very expressive. It's very young. It's out there. And the, the An Jin is more yin. It's gathering, it's receiving energy and then compressing. It's going and just like yin, it, it tends to move into smaller and smaller space and more and more solid. And that's what we're doing with our spirit in the uh, in uh, the on. Then we go to the Hua Jin and we're taking spirit and we're converting that to emptiness. And so that's uh, very few practitioners that I've met are actually going in that direction. Most of the people that, you know, most of the higher level practitioners that I've encountered are more in the, in the Anjin category, that they are, they are taking Qi and moving it toward, toward spirit. And most of the, everybody else is moving from the physicality into, into Qi. So that's the, those are those three levels. So we've actually addressed this in, in different ways. And you can think of it as small, medium, and large too. So it's like, whenever we do a form, we do it big, you know, that's the Ming. And then we do it medium and we're kind of, you know, soft and medium, and that's the on. And then whenever we move into stillness, into more of the emptiness, then we get more into the Hua. Um, these are just little snapshots of, of the possibilities. And whenever we, um, whenever you actually encounter somebody who's moving, uh, you know, in this Hua Chin, it's, it's a little eerie because there's a, it's coming from a different place. It's like, you know, transcendent. And uh, so, that when it, we, but we're kind of moving in that direction. And a lot of the, the exercises we've been doing here in, in the class, in the classes, is moving that direction. That is, we are reestablishing the Ming first and then feeling the energy. And then we're taking that and becoming more and more Shen. And then we're getting and letting go of that and moving into just kind of whenever we do like an exercise, we say, okay, now feel all those energies at once, but don't do any of them. Then we're moving more into the Hua. And uh, so the, we're going to play around with that a little bit. Um, uh, one more comment about that is a lot of people, when they, they encounter even if they don't encounter the, these terms, when they like say they, they they'll see a a teacher like a really high level martial artist, a taiji player, something like that, and they'll say, "Oh, okay, that is what I want to be. I want to be that guy. 
I want to be this guy that is that looks like um like they're so soft that they uh you know you can blow them over with with a, with a feather and that's the they're demonstrating the hua there or not the hua the the uh, an that is that very the, going from the hardness of ming to the to the softness of on but it's for it to be effective it must be rooted in ming that is you have to do the work first you have to do the physical work in order to have something to go to you can you can disappear you can move into emptiness but as a martial art it's not going to be effective at all unless you are grounded in the ming the the obvious the you know the substantial aspect of it so you can think of it as the substantiality of ming the insubstantiality of on and then beyond that in in when we're going into the hua that's you know where it's it's so insubstantial it's almost not there that's where the emptiness comes in so why don't you stand up and let's uh let's play around with this idea and even if you don't like these words it's okay the actions are going to have their own validity in the doing and you can think of your own names for it if you like but the the doing it this is is the key and um our um uh, This is just a way of talking about it so that I can communicate these ideas to you. All right, so let's begin with our three pillars. I'm being told to go back. Okay, so we're gonna begin with the three pillars. So let's feel the Feel yourself centering over the balls of your feet. Knees are, are unlocked, bent slightly. So feel yourself sinking down. You're releasing the hip joints, feeling very sung kwa. So everything is ah sliding down, down, down. And reach for the crown of your head. So you're Reaching upward and tuck in your chin and open the jade pillow gate at the base of your skull. And you'll feel into that. So you're centering over the balls of your feet, reaching up with the crown. And reach out with your elbows a little bit. Point your index fingers and feel the energetic coherence. Relax your lower back. Allow your sacrum to drop. So here we are, this is Ming. That is, we are converting our essence into Qi. And you can feel the energy moving through your body. You can feel the tingling and pulsing in your hands. This begins the conversation. We fill up with energy so that we can, I think I mentioned it last week, we're kind of playing push hands with the universe. But you need to be full. Your energy needs to be full to be able to do that. Otherwise, there's a tendency to collapse. <clears throat> And this is the other reason why you know people just go want to go right to the on and go, oh, I just want to go into the yin part and skip the Ming. They they don't ever really get enough fullness there. The container for the chi is not strong enough to be able to handle the uh, efforts and counter efforts that that come with that. We 
you know, step out. I mean, you just sink, release down, down, feel yourself sinking, sink into your heels now. You just feel the yin here, the substantiality of your body. Feel the connection with the earth. Feel your root. Into the ball to your feet. You reach with your wrists. Relax your shoulders. Very slowly raise your wrists up to about belt high. Just feel that. Feel the heaviness of your arms. You're centered over the balls of your feet. Feel the energy in your hands and your arms. Feel the pulsing there. And reach with the fingers. And reach with your elbows and open up between your shoulder blades. Sink into your heels and pull your hands back, pull your elbows back and feel the yin. Reach forward with your fingers and pull back with your body and just feel Poles in opposition there. Then reaching forward, pulling back. Now pull back with your hands, forward with your body. We're generating energy here. We're creating chi by holding poles in opposition. Push forward with your hands, back with your body. So this is Ming. This is we're using our physicality to create chi and to create chi flow. Pull back, body forward. Body back, hands forward. Feel yourself, go to the balls of your feet, feel yourself really expanding, reaching out, opening, feel that young expansion. And we're going to let that go and we're going to go into the on part. So we're going to this time we're going to attract energy from the environment. We're going to attract the chi from the earth and the heavens. And even more than we were before. And just very softly. So we're going from the hardness of the yang to the softness of the yin. Hands come back, body comes forward. Very light. Now reach out, body goes back, very soft. We are asking the nature chi to come in to feed us. Pull back, body forward. Hands forward, body back. Very soft, open, receive. Oh. 
This is where we are converting Chi to Shen. Reach forward, but don't move. Body back, but don't move. Pull back with your hands, body forward, but don't move. Hands forward, body back, don't move. This is the Hua part. This is where we're converting Shen to emptiness. Now feel all those motions forward back all at once and don't move. We'll sink into your heels and press down with your hands. You disappear the chi, sink into the emptiness of it. Feel that potentiality for all those movements. but feel it in the emptiness. Now we're gonna take this and we're going to do the three gins in a uh, ward off, roll back, press, and push. Hong Lu Ji An as a repetitive exercise, nice and slow to really feel into the distinction we're making here between the Yang or the Ming the yin of the an and the transformation of the hua. Okay, so I'm gonna turn to the side just so you can see me a little bit better. And let's right foot forward, And turn, left hand up, right hand palm up. First, we're going to start with Ming. This is going to be big and, and very demonstrative. You sink into that right claw, set your right knee, and then turn and Reach with the right hand. You feel into that. Big and open. You're opening your arms. You're creating space here. What that does, you know, it creates room for your internal organs to, to expand and, and, and uh, allows for the chi flow to go there. Your heart, your 
lungs, your your spleen, your kidneys. Okay, your kidneys actually want to focus on your you want to wag your tail for for your kidneys. But so let's uh here we are. So we're, we're feeling the the bigness of it, and we sink and turn to the right. Wag your tail. So you're using your using a, a nice long tail, the dragon tail, reaching out with that as you're turning and reaching out big into the into the corner, opening your shoulders, opening your chest, really giving your internal organs room to breathe. Now sink into your left heel and turn, feel the ball of your left foot and reach. And as you're turning, you're wagging that tail, you're reaching with that, and that's activating your kidney and your bladder energies, restoring your, your organs. Notice the arms are big, they're open. Reaching with the crown of the head, my spine is vertical, creating space between the vertebrae. Everything's very expansive. This is the young part, the substantial part. And sink and reach up, sink into your right heel, set the right knee and then turn, wag your tail, feel that energy get into the, to the um, G and and sink into your left heel, reach up with your wrist, sink down with your elbows, pressing down, feel the substantiality of that energy. And sink into your right heel, right knee and push. Feel that opening that expansiveness. Reaching with your elbows, you're feeling it between your back, between your shoulder blades, in your back, between your shoulder blades. Reaching with your fingers, reaching the crown of your head. And sink into your left heel and turn, wag your tail. Now we'll do on. Smaller. So if you think of it as large, medium, and small. So here we go to on. And this is yin. And <laughs> sink into your right heel. And nice and soft. We're taking the the energy and converting it to Shen. It's rising. The chi is rising. We're opening the jade pillow, pillow gate, allowing the, the chi to rise to the center of your brain, to the spirit valley between your the hemispheres of your brain. And sink into your right heel and turn, reach, small. Soft, relaxed, left heel, and turn, left ball, very soft. Feel that yin, the quiet, the hidden. Think, reach up with your wrist. Right heel, turn, ball of the right foot and press. Chi, very soft, very hidden. And left heel, separate the hand, reach up at the wrist, sink. Feel the yin attracting 
the energy from the nature, from nature, if you feel the right heels at the right knee and right ball and push. Feel the softness of that. Feel the effervescence of the chi. Kingly and sparkly quality of the energy. Sink into your left heel and turn. Very yin, very gathered. Center. Reach with the crown of your head. Sink into that left leg. And we'll move to the hua. Watch in. To the right heel. This is transformational. Shen goes to emptiness. This is the mystery. We're drawing our energy from the mystery. Turn to the right, reach very soft. Up to you. And to press. You can do left heel. This is the push. It's also called on or on jin, but it's a different kind of on jin, different, different meaning of the term. Thank you. One more time with the hua. This time, because I'm not going to talk too much, just very slowly and deliberately feeling into the emptiness, letting go.
Now feel all three. Ming, on and watching simultaneously. The form and the formless. The yin, the yang, and the yin yang. Step in. Take a deep breath. And exhale, throw away the chi. Dissolve into the emptiness. Please have a seat. Mm. How'd that go? Good? Questions, thoughts, reports? Anything you'd like to share with the uh, Valerie? I don't know how the hell you were talking. <laughs> when we did the first, the first part of just raising um, you know, raising the arms and then the body forward and uh, the hands forward, body back, and then reverse that. And going through the Ming, An, and Hua. Um, I found it very difficult to then proceed on and not still be in Hua. You know, it was... I, I was not successful because it was three quarters of what I was experiencing. I was trying to, you know, do what you were saying. And um, uh, to a certain degree, I was successful, but uh, wow. A whole lot of emptiness in there, huh? A whole lot. That was very cool. Was Sorry about that. Very, very, very <laughs> cool. <laughs> cool yeah it uh it, one can develop a taste for that <laughs> well and, for a person who is you know young most of the time i'm on right uh yeah <laughs> this could be very good for me <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey. but that's that's why we we have to keep coming back to the ming Yes. Coming back to the substantial and say, okay, you know, th you know, this is this is where the game is being played here, and and in being, not in non-being. So it's uh, we're you know it's it's we that's what the game is being. But the non-being, the emptiness, can fill us and elevate the whole conversation. Oh, yes. <laughs> like I said, though, I don't know how you were talking. I noticed that your talking did get a little quieter 
and slower. So I was going, okay, he's he's with me. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was, Somebody's uh, got to drive the bus. Yes, that's true. <laughs> you know, and help me get off the bus here and there. Uh, but, uh, and Wa energy, how do you spell that? The Wa H-U-A. Gym. H-U-A, okay. Wa. H-U-A. On is A-N and Ming yeah. my energy. Cool. Hmm. Scott. It's so bizarre how often that um, when you do a class on Tuesday, it's something that I've kind of discovered in my form practice during the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, day before yesterday, I kind of did this and got to a place that I don't know how I got there. And it was mm. kind of the same, kind of, you know, kind of the same thing. It's just really bizarre. There's some kind of folk and mind meld going on there or something. Nice. Very weird. Nice. Well, it is stuff that we've been playing with for a couple of years now. And, but, you know, this is a, a way of framing it, which I don't think, I don't know that I've talked in this language so much before. So it, uh, and uh, so being able to, to think of it in these terms, you know, makes it, uh, you know, it gives it a framework. You know, like I said before, even if you don't like the terms, you know, it's a way of talking about, a valid experience and you know a way of you know to to discuss it and say okay where where is this taking us i was actually able to be aware of creating the forms in the void which was just too trippy I, that's that's very cool. Okay, yeah, so, that, was, and, that was really. And whoa. that's kind of where we, where we're, where this whole thing is heading, and we're never done with this. It's right. always, you know, it's like there are levels and levels beyond levels. There are gods and gods above gods, you know. Mm-hmm. So that it keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger as as we cultivate that, and it's always that process of, oh, I'm in a new place. I need Ming. Yeah, I need what? Yeah, I need you know. I need on. I need what? You know, it's a it it each level of discovery. We we get to a you know move at it from substantial to insubstantial to transformational over and over again. So at the end, when you had us, you know, when we were releasing the energy, it was. Um, the energy, it wasn't like it usually is. It's not, it wasn't like this full, young kind of energy that usually it was a, a whole different thing. And it was almost like, well, I can't really let go of this because it just is me. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. You're very correct that <clears throat> you have talked about this you know a lot um but this framework really um it just made things more clear good good yeah yeah if we had to do the classes for four years we wouldn't have been ready to hear you say again if we hadn't been doing these classes for four years with you, we wouldn't have been ready to hear you. Right. Right. It just would have been a good exercise. Yeah. Well, hopefully people who have not been doing it for that long are able to hear it because, you know, we, we've we been laying the groundwork here for for some time, too. So it's right. a, been a gradual process of evolving the language so that we can accelerate the evolution and make it, you know, something that moves, proceeds quite rapidly, you know, to not the taking the four decades plus that I've been at it, you know, to to get to this place, being able to to you know get people there quicker, because that's then we can have more 
more fun people to play with uh, <laughs> when we get uh, get more uh, more people playing at that level. Jonathan. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, you've always been about feel make make yourself feel the chi, like do it and you can feel it. And it, I'm thinking of it in contrast to Wayson Lau and his Tai Chi classics. First step, meditation. You sit and you feel your blood flow and you do it for weeks, you do it for months. And when you connect, then you'll have the chi and now we can do something with the chi. But it's like it's like total passivity, except for you know awareness to know that there's chi going on. But you've never worked that way. You've worked kind of, and it's kind of amazing. You've worked, whoa, we can do little things and make the chi. We don't, we don't have to wait weeks and months. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, is there something about finding it in the stillness before creating form that also could have something very positive? Um, I mean, the slow way, let's say. You're the, you are the, you are the master of get it, just let's get into it, create it. It's, an, it's exhilarating. It's fantastic. And one can do it all day. But, um, you know, you never had that. Now, we're going to spend our first two months not doing anything. No, no form. You never went that way. But is there something lost? In, I don't know. In not going that way. Well, I, I think what the, 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 the method you're describing there is the second stage. That's, that's, the, that's the on. The, so yeah, that's... But, that's that's so to me that's out of sequence to if you want to cultivate this stuff you start with the doing i mm. i think Wayson Liao actually is is very fond of the doing everything i yeah, read yeah, but he, everything and, and and yeah having just you know worked with him just uh, ever so briefly you know it's all about you know doing for him it's all no, about no, the steps yeah, Tai Chi classic, step one, meditate, and, and, and for weeks or months. And then when you feel the Chi, now you can do something with it. It's absolutely that. I, I take my word. <laughs> I look it up, but I, okay. I wish I had it right here. But it is that. Uh, but so I, I'm saying, I can get that from the book, but... but uh, it's, it's there. It's, on the first, it's in the first chapter. <laughs> but like I'm saying, I'm praising you. For like saying, okay, for those who don't want to wait weeks and months, Rick Barrett will get you right into the flow of things. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure that you'll get it in weeks or months that way. I, I don't think you. In fact, I'm I'm relatively certain that sitting on your butt is not going to get you to the place no, I'm no, talking. No, not, not not sitting, not sitting. I mean, very real meditation awareness. Not sitting. I think. Well, actually, that's a good question. No, it's feeling your whole body. That's a good question. Whether what position he says to be in, uh, maybe it's just lying down or something. I don't know. It's a good question. But we, you, we keep coming back to stillness. I mean, this what you did today was powerful in 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 what you can do with stillness. I mean, yes. you're, you know, much much of what we do is like, gee, we're moving in some way. We do some exercises, but this is really maximizing what stillness is. I mean, there's a line, what, the, in stillness, yin and yang, fuse and return to wu chi. You know? But this is an, you activated a stillness in which maybe something like that, I can sort of begin to approach what that means. And that's really amazing. A dynamic stillness is about the most incredible, I think, thing you can feel. So uh, I, I love this. I hope you'll continue with it. Yeah, well, it's a, you know, if we, if we look at it, it's like, that we're able to appreciate that stillness because we did the Ming first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know that. So, yeah. so we're moving from from this dynamic expression of energy, and then saying, "Ah, oh, now we're gonna we're going to gather. We're going to attract Qi. We've thrown it away. Now we're going to attract Yin, and then." And then we move into now we're going to throw that away and move into emptiness. Throw yeah, the chi I, away. I, I vote for like continuing on this, not adding many more moves or anything, but just deepening in this, right? Not like oh we got it. Let's How, move what on would that something. look like, Jonathan? I I'm curious because uh, you know just repeat the same exercise or how, how you say not adding new moves. I, 
to me, I think I'm, I'm, I'm curious because yeah, but to get well, I, I give your instruction again. Let's. I mean, this was a first run. I think Valerie and Scott may have tuned in a little better than I did. I'd love. I would love to redo it. Have a, a larger group here. Hear what each of us gets out of it in the way Valerie was able to talk about Hua and and in the terms you used. If we can get us all in that way of of specifying with the language what we're feeling, then we'll move on. I think a couple more times, don't you think? A couple more, just this lesson? Yes, no, cool I, couple? Well, you you originally said not too many more moves. So I think maybe, you know, maybe not, okay, like you yeah, said, adding a couple of moves maybe. But I, I want to keep, I want to all think that, this, this, that would violate the Ming part. That is mm. getting, you know, getting something a thing to work with and then throw it away. Right. Yeah. So so getting learning each of these new forms then uh, gives us a new shape. But okay, okay, now we're going to put this this three step process into a different shape now. Mm. We're gonna put it into the Bagua now. We're gonna put it into sh into oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? You got we got as long as you keep the most simple. simple. As long okay. as you keep the moves, as long as you keep the moves simple, because you know we don't want to be trying to think of, thinking about our movements while we're doing this. We've got to. Yeah, you know, no, you're right. What, right. That's that's why we I picked something that was fairly familiar, the Pung right. Gian. Yeah, and I I guess I would still say for a few more times, keep it to that, so that we can get what's different, which is the way you're languaging it and the concepts you're putting into it. Keep the moves as absolutely simple. As possible, not like some new move or I don't know. That that would be my. Yeah. It's the language that's new, right? And it's the way. Uh, so, I'm I'm always a little restless to get on to the next thing. So, <laughs> yeah, I know you. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, and if you want to God do this, you, 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 you. just we'll post a YouTube video, and you get to do it as often as you want. You know, and, <laughs> yeah, uh, and fair yeah, enough. And not just you, but anybody else out there wants to. Yeah, 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 fair enough. Fair to, enough. You know, I wouldn't. And, uh, so, but to take that idea and then say, okay, we're going to put it into a different form now, into a different shape, into a different process, and see how that feels. You know what happens whenever you're doing like the opening to the the Xing Yi form or the the Bagua form. What happens there <coughs> when we do it? Because it, uh, you know, I, I I agree with you. It's it's worth repeating. Um, uh, but we definitely have to keep it keep it interesting for people too. I would like to, um, yeah, I would like to, like you said, create feel how it how it feels to create different forms in the void. That's <laughs> that's, that's 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 where I can. That's what well, I want. Good, good. Well, uh, th th thank you for, for the for the feedback. Appreciate that, and uh, that uh, that went well. Oh, excellent. You know, really well. I mean, I've never felt quite this way ever yeah. before. Yeah. It's well, like I feel this, I feel all three states simultaneously. Fantastic. The outside, the outside of my body is expanding. The inside of my body feels very um, yin. So I've got the yang, I've got the yin. And then there's this whole void thing going on. I've never experienced that all at once. It's um, extremely interesting. Terrific, beautiful. Okay, well that uh, that that's that's encouraging. Good. All right, and I'm getting the the, the signal from the producer. Thank you, producer. Thank, Thank you. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye.